Hey guys, um, welcome back to School Tomorrow. We are open, free and open here. Free source code, under version control, Jupyter Notebooks, a preferred sharing technology. This is using localhost here where everything's interactive for me. And I could put this in, say, a Docker situation and you could run it in the cloud and there is technology for doing that. And um, Google Colab is another option, right? The Jupyter Notebook technology is being rebranded into different distributions. You could call it distros. And um, I'm just sticking with Jupyter Notebook for now. And at the end of this video, I want to remind you about NB Viewer. So that's kind of the final topic. And in the middle, I want to round out some threads from the previous video. I was showing in the background a few times Old Man River City Project. And it's a little bit sparse here on Wikipedia, right? It gives some of the dimensions, but I think some of the missing dimensions would be what I would call in today's language, right? So it's August of 2020. And I think, you know, to use today's jargon, this was a Black Lives Matter project, right? And it wasn't going to be Robert Moses style imposed top down. So part of the fun of creating this city plan was to integrate it into a process whereby it would kind of organically emerge from the affected individuals, right? You don't just land like the Marines and say, get out of the way, we're going to build a city here. You know, that would be the stupid kind of... To put it in today's language, this was not designed as a white supremacist project, right? So interesting, put that in your pipe and smoke it, as they say. It's an old idiom there. I also want to round out some... References I've made recently to, <clears throat> um, like H H high voltage DC is HVDC is something that happens um, from the Columbia Gorge here, which is our place based location for my example school to uh, California. Right, that's an older one. Um, it's been there for a while. So when we talk about the global grid, again, that's been a recent topic. You want to get fluent with these different maps, like the Mesopotamian grid is what, you know, what we talk about quite a bit. Iran, Iraq, <clears throat> where, where are the connections? And what would be like a future grid there if you're doing sim grid, right? So all these simulations I've been talking about. So Now, the trick with Jupyter Notebook, by the way, <clears throat> before I do that, we do tend to use the fuller projection a lot for when we're showing some of this grid stuff because inner ties across the top are in the works, you could say, right? And therefore... Um, we're not as excited as Massachusetts, the state of, about the Peters projection. Not that you can't use both, though. So the either-or thing always stumps people. It's like, we've got to pick the map we're going to use. I'm referring to an older story back around the time of, uh, of July 4th last year when the president gave a speech about... Um, revolutionaries taking over the airports and something about Alexander Graham Bell I was I was jumping in there and saying you know here's a chance to link to our curriculum and do like do something relevant to sort of American heritage because that's what we're talking about here as a recruiter you've heard me kind of play up that this is your American heritage, and it is, right, because we're talking about Fuller, and Fuller is an American transcendentalist coming from the New England transcendentalist literary tradition. So if you're listening to this in 
one of our schools, say in Mesopotamia, you're not necessarily familiar with all this. And the Quakers fit in here, <clears throat> and the Quakers kind of, thanks to me right now, because I'm not finding, um, I'm finding some friends who are interested uh, in Mithraism, is going to be our way of getting back to sort of our heritage in in other parts of the world. Not that we can't go through Christianity all the way back, but we can branch out from different parts of the um, the Roman story. Neo-Roman is kind of the area that we seem to be in now, right, with Emperor Pompeo and the Caesar Act, isn't it called? Anyway, we're reliving Roman times at the moment. So I think it's important <clears throat> when we uh, when we tell the story of history that we see how our behavior today is owing to what what we could call inertia or karma, right? You fall back on what what the ancestors did or felt sometimes by default. Like, if you don't have any better ideas. Now, Old Man River City, again, and I'm going to get to the NB viewer thing, is a mega project. And the question is, do we have a stomach for any mega projects? Because there's a feeling like a lot of our recent mega projects, say the Manhattan Project, have really backfired. Like, we now have permanent planetary damage and stuff. And so it's like we shy away from mega projects, small is beautiful, but then we have mega projects. We just have to because there's a lot of us, right? We are a mega project. That's what I'm saying in my last video that we are a mega project of nature as humanity. And cities are a huge manifestation of climate change, right? Because it's the biosphere that we're talking about, it's utterly transformed thanks to humans. Now, you can focus on global warming and so on, but remember, there are a lot more parameters at play, and it's not really up to debate whether or not we are terraforming the planet. We are. We being we the humans, right? We don't deny that. We can't. We wouldn't deny that. Look at the lights here. Look, look. The planet looks completely different, right? Because of humans. And so <clears throat> you can argue about <clears throat> sea levels and stuff. But when it comes to humans make a difference, there is no question. <clears throat> and the long-term consequences of, of what we do or don't do are real. So um, that's why we have school, partly. Get us all in the mood and trained up to where we can tackle our responsibilities realistically somewhat, right? So the, the thing to do since if you're new to all this, I'll catch up here real quick. We base sharing a lot of our curriculum in version control. And at this point, GitHub for me. But there's all kinds of ways to implement. And you want to share curriculum materials, right? I, as a teacher and as a student with my teachers, like I have, I'm a student and a teacher. I'm a student more than I'm a teacher, you could say. That's the usual ratio, because there's always more to learn than you know, you could say. But anyway, either sharing or doing homework or whatever my role is, forget about that at the moment. You just want to put a repo up there and then be able to drill down. And if you like what you see, try before you buy, then you want to get the code. And you click code and you clone it. And then you can actually fork it here, too. You can create a copy in your own repo up here, fork button. And this is what I call Martian math. And before you, like, decide you want a local host copy, which would be interactive, you come to uh, GitHub and you just click on it. And usually it loads without a problem. Sometimes the rendering machine is busy. And you reload a couple times, but it's it's here now. It came up right away. And this is from my Reed College 
prototype of this course where we put Anaconda Distro on all of these Macs, right? The front of the room there was just chairs, and I was kind of in lecture mode a bit. I would talk a little bit. They were so thrilled to have a kind of situation like this where they could all find each other and do multi-user stuff as well, and I wasn't wanting to discourage that. It was summer camp for them. This was fun time. So I was not <clears throat> going to, like, make this just a boring math class or something, and I didn't. But I did test out, uh, again, this wasn't my first time even at Reed to do this. I did test out uh, various uh, curriculum components. I think I clicked on a picture there, and it didn't really go anywhere. But you can, when you create your... Jupyter Notebooks, because the idea is you get to do this, right? Embed the pictures you want, the links you want, the Python programs you want. This is your tool to make your stuff as a student and a teacher. And so that's what I'm doing here. And then I'm thinking, you know, if there's a YouTube being shown, I can't actually watch the YouTube right here. Like, let's go to page two and see if there's any YouTubes. And if there aren't, I'll back out of here and find an example where I know there's YouTubes. So scrolling down. So this is how we do multiplication in Martian math. A times B, 3 times 2, you would do something like use a grid like this. And likewise, three numbers, A times B times C, branching off from a vertex here, this gives you a sliver, and it has the volume you would expect, A times B times C, right? And that's what we call Martian math, and there's easy way to integrate it <clears throat> with your Earthling math so that it all becomes one big math, which it always is, right? It's like it's easy to make a bridge from this math that I'm showing you to the math you already know, or you may already know this math. If you've been hanging around the school tomorrow, You've seen this a million times. Not literally, but you know what I mean. So here I am on GitHub looking at some version of this particular notebook. And let's say I want to see the YouTubes directly embedded. Then I'm going to go to NB Viewer. Let's dive bomb into... Okay, remember there's more repositories. There's 26 of them in my case at this moment, right, when I'm making the YouTube, of course. And scrolling down, I'm going to dive into, let's see what, C60. And I believe there's only one Jupyter Notebook here called OSCON 2019. And I dimly recall what's in here. So if you were to want this, again, you can fork it or you can clone it. But let's say you just want to read it online. You don't need a copy in this case, let's say. But look, the YouTube, although it's mentioned, and you could just cut and paste this code easily to YouTube, and this may be all you really want or need. It's like, okay, this is good enough. I can work with this. There's no problem. At least it tells you there's a YouTube citation here. But what if you're wanting to just kind of read and <clears throat> look at the YouTubes at the same time? Then, and hey, maybe Git, GitHub might have changed by the time you see this. So you're thinking, well, that's GitHub 2020. I'm not in 2020 anymore. So that's good, you know. It's like you um, have a better a better version of GitHub or something, but... A lot of what's going to be here is going to be dated um, in terms of the technology that I'm using. The group theory isn't going to go anywhere, right? And I'm pushing as part of Lambda Calc that you have this like parallel track through high school math where you didn't take calculus as much, or you did, but you also took a lot of this other early steps into group theory because you're sharpening your programming chops. I'm using basically group theory as a great uh, topic to chew on as you develop your Python. And swap in any language there if you want to do a permutation as an object of a class, object-oriented, fine. If you want to go purely functional programming and do permutations that way, 
fine. And if you want to do both, fine, right? So it's like when I show you curriculum stuff, the whole idea is you don't have to think, oh, I'm, I'm going to have to clone this. It's like, no. It could be quiet. For one thing, you don't want to use English, right? And that's not a problem, right? You're listening to this already translated, right? So let's get to the final uh, notebook that is going to have the YouTubes in it, right? Three Phase Power has, has YouTubes. But here I am in localhost. So I see the YouTubes, right? Because I'm, I'm just localhost. But when I go back to GitHub, okay, here's what I'll do. I'll take this URL. We already found the YouTubes that don't show. And I'm going to go to NB Viewer. So this is a little trick, NB Viewer, NB Viewer, and paste in this uh, GitHub URL. It could be anywhere public, right? As long as it's world readable and NB Viewer is going to be able to find it, therefore, it'll do a rendering job, right? Is what, <clears throat> and it's going to be JSON. Under the hood, you've got like a JSON file. So if you try to look at it as a raw file, uninterpreted, good luck, right? It's not going to be that friendly. But run through the mill, so to speak, it comes out beautiful. And here we've got a little different branding, the NB Viewer up here. That's worth looking at this, even if you're not using Jupyter Notebook, because Colab at Google is all similar. It's like this whole technology is getting replicated under slightly different branding and different points, uh, different distros, so you're maybe familiar with this kind of ecosystem, but you call it something a little different. Maybe it's, you know, in a language I can't even read, which wouldn't be unusual. So <clears throat> look at the difference here. The YouTube is playable. I'm going to turn off the speaker, but actually right here in the context of the Jupyter Notebook, at least in theory, I'm able, there it is, I'm able to discuss whatever this is about. That's a short talk on object-oriented, right? So, or object-oriented programming in Python with the dog class and stuff like that. Just, you could just use it as a stand-in. Like this is just representative of any YouTube on any topic, right? I'm, again, back to teacher training mode. This is an excellent way to push forward under the heading of curriculum development, like we do with Old Man River City. Like I said, it's more or less, in today's terminology, this would be called a Black Lives Matter project, you could say, because it wasn't to be imposed. Like the Wikipedia um, content here is quite sparse in terms of like dimensions. They treat it as just one more architectural project, but actually it was... I'd say more subversive in that sense that it was organically woven into the fabric of the local geography and the people there. It was to be developed organically out of a process more than imposed from above. It, in today's language, it was not like going to be a white supremacist kind of bam, here you're going to have, you know, everyone out of the way, we're going to do this to you now whether you want us to or not, that kind of thing. So, <clears throat> part of our curriculum is looking at these kind of futuristic projects and their mega projects and thinking, can we afford the biosphere, can the biosphere afford the consequences of things like this, right? And it's not an open and shut question. There's discussion that has to happen. And so that's what we call world game, which involves simulations. And we've talked about simulations recently, especially of grids, right? Because we're pretty grid minded. You're always like, you've been taught, we've been talking about the Mesopotamian grid, Iran, Iraq. Where, where is the grid today? And where are we thinking it could go, right? Simulations. And that's why we use this map a lot, the Bucky uh, map, because one of our projections is HVDC or HV, 
Yeah, probably across the um, like. Would that have to be? Is there another technology we might want to use? You know those kind of questions. But there at the center of the map, you've got a pretty important connection on the books, ready to go, as we say. And then the Peters projection, it's not either or, right? It's like you can use both. We tend to keep the, the fantasy world out of the Dimaxion, like the layer where you pretend you have these nations that you then bomb them with impunity whenever you feel like it. It's like you can't both disrespect sovereignty completely and think you can have nations at the same time. That's like have your cake and eat it or whatever. It's a fallacy, right? By now, given the disrespect towards sovereignty, it's so clear that we don't have any. People want to show it. People want to have that layer of political data, but on the fuller projection, that's like Santa Claus, right? We don't want to mar a serious map with kind of a child's understanding, right? We're more for adults. Anyway, usual rant, right? Grid talk. You want to learn some grid talk. All right. Talk to you soon. Enjoy your day.